and here's here's the, again the shot where he's using a telephoto lens. So that, just look how look how in focus the background is. But look how he uses the third, the upper third here for the fight. And so he does the same thing with a telephoto lens here with with Beatty in the boat. He's the telephoto lens. What it does is it narrows the focus and brings the background closer to the foreground. And so here's Beatty. He's probably standing. I don't know, 10, 15 yards from the boat, but but the way he shot it, the boat looms so large, it's practically on top of Beatty. And and what it does is, it, is the, bo the boat is in focus and Beatty's in focus. So these things are important in the shot. Whereas the next shot, showing he's a little more escape, Beatty is in focus, but the sheriff who's looking down at him isn't in focus. And so what we do is we get more depth. It's more of a wide angle lens creating depth so that the foreground is a little blurred and and, and, and then where it's, where it's focused in the background is sharp, and so we get some separation in the sense that it gives us a distance between the two figures. Here, Beatty's flying, and uh, Willis, at this point, we can see that he's begun to experiment with something he'd become famous for, which is underexposing the light in a shot. And what it does, it gives you a lot more browns and, and earth tones, and it's just darker, and it doesn't make you feel happy, but it makes you feel as if um, there is consequence to what's going on. He even does it in the outdoor scene here where he's uh, talking in the park. Here it's a very brightly lit day, it's in the park, but the, look, at he's got the, the brown tones on the people that kind of shrouded in darkness. So even if they're in the park here, they're talking about something mysterious. And what he does is he contrasts that part of the movie, the, the the paranoid, troubling part, with I'm just trying to get on with my life part. And what we do is we have a, this kind of cool uh, blast of light, this overexposed light, so that the palette is is very very shallow and it's and it's um, it's not there's not much depth to it. And so if we reverse the shot, we're looking through the curtain. What we do is we get this innocence and this coolness, it was this detachment when we get without the depth, without the hot or warm tones. And of course, that's juxtaposed well in this shot with the city being gray and distant and the dark tone of the assassin looking down at the, uh, at the convention. And, and here's a nice shot of it, an insert shot of the gun against the, the blue and red tables so that there's menace, just the, the dark menace over the bright TV setting. And finally, uh, when he cuts, cuts to his list, his script, even, even, even what he's got to look at, what he's got to read as an insert shot, is put in dark beiges, nothing light here. So it's, it's, it is always a hovering shroud to all of it. And when he's in a bar here, the, this he'll develop later in f movies, but he's, you see the bar is, 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 look how dark that bar is, everything is, is pretty murky, and what it does is when you look at him, you can barely see him because it's an internal shot. He wants you to get it inside Beatty, not look at his surroundings. And this wonderful shot here, of course, towards the end, we have a shot where the space that has depth is perfectly put, not perfect, I won't say perfect in any of this, but is wonderfully put with um, the light in the background with the, with the person uh, on this on the slab and Beatty in that in that left corner and and what's what's what, what's really interesting about it is you look at it and you say well, well she is in this is in the center of that shot but then we realize that shot's just an opening of the door so what happens is he's taken the frame and he's put a frame within a frame so within that frame he puts this woman almost in the lower third and, and Beatty in the upper third so that we've got the frame uh, giving us a sense of, sense of depth, but also a sense of distance, a sense of coolness, and of isolation. Here, uh, combining his themes, here he's got the, the 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 bright light and the muted tones of the furniture, the and uh, and, the, and, the, and the clothing. So he seems isolated and yet uh, imperiled, and and the star chamber here, the grilling people, the people who are putting him on the. Docket, look at how uh, underexposed all that is. Just a couple of sconces there lit, but it's very underexposed. We'll see this later in a very famous movie. The next uh, movie that he um, got around to doing after the paranoid 
view of life was was a movie with Woody Allen. And there he is looking through his uh, eyepiece. But his next movie was Woody Allen. It was Manhattan. And um, Manhattan, although the posters got blue on it, was shot in black and white on an anamorphic, uh, using an anamorphic lens, so there would be anamorphic widescreen. And what he does, what he does here in 1979 New York is he, he, he transforms it into a kind of a, a dreamlike fantasy city. It's a love letter to Manhattan. Although in that love letter, it's a bittersweet story about uh, what he considers your typical New Yorker, a, a pessimistic person who's got relationship problems, and he's got he's he's anxious, a lot of anxiety and neurosis, and yet love of art, and of course love of love, and in Manhattan, uh, as a as a palette for for Willis to use, I, I think he, he probably referred to Mark. Brassai, a Parisian photographer in the 1930s, famous for his looks of Paris in the 30s. And here's Pont Neuf in Paris, the, the bridge over the Seine. And, 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 and he's in a number of photos of his were famous pictures of the bridge framed in blackness. And, and I think this shot here, the iconic shot that Willis has of Woody Allen's Manhattan, is very much like Mark Brassai's. And, and in here we have. Uh, the, the the Brooklyn Bridge and its lights and everything. But what, what's wonderful about it is look at the way he takes that lower third of the picture with Woody and Diane and the silhouette there. And look at what he does with the lines. He's got that street light. So he, he basically gives you a line for one third of the frame to the right. And in that motion moving us kind of in that negative space towards the light with this wonderful frame, it seems very... Uh, meditative and romantic, as this does here with this swil silhouette. But look at how underexposed he is here, barely exposed at all, just a little background light. But what it gives it gives us this, this is privacy and 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 uh, very intimacy that he does just purely by lighting. And on the other end, when we were getting the comedic part of Woody's movie, Willis, of course. Uh, make sure that when Woody is contrasted with the skeleton in the biology lab, he divides it so that Woody's got a different background than the skeleton. Though the skeleton's a little brighter, Woody's a little darker. And when he works with Woody in uh, his conversations, and what we have here is uh, a shot where Woody's talking to Hemingway, Muriel Hemingway, and what we do is we see her head so big in the frame. Look at her head. Her head dominates one half the frame practically. And so that puts, puts her right in the shot, almost intimidatingly on top of Woody. And so when we reverse it, uh, we have Woody's head, again, looming in the shot and uh, against Muriel's here. And what we do is we get this, it's, it's almost like a compressed space. It's a wide shot because we're focusing uh, on the background here. But it is, it, it's, uh, the foreground seems is almost on top of her. And what happens is it, it just it makes it, uh, intimacy a lot more compact. And so here we got a different look of intimacy where Diane Keaton is practically putting her arms around Woody as he's imitating modern art. But look at what Willis does in this shot. In order to say, okay, I am an urbane modern guy in New York, he makes it, it helps it's black and white, of course, because of the black and white scheme of the paintings in the background. But look, he puts a light on the painting in the background. The, the diagonal lines of the painting in the background are almost like the diagonal lines of Diane and Woody. And... He, and, he, and he frames it such that so we feel this kind of, it's, it's, it's a colder light, almost funny because they're darker, but it's, everything is, 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 it's a little colder, a little more spare, a little more intellectual. Here, in our conflict with Woody and Diane, in, in a kind of an urban environment, we can see he's added some depth to it. He's got a, he's got a wide angle lens, so the, the foreground's close, and the, but we see a little bit of the blur in the background, but it's, 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 it's darker again, it's, right? It's, it's got that shroud effect so it makes you feel okay i am the urban uh angst ridden person in the 20th century but when he goes inside his apartment and he's fighting with his wife Meryl street he blasts out the light here and flattens everything and so that the domestic life the conflict he's having with Meryl, it's basically juxtaposed so that it isn't mysterious it's 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 uh, just pure bland anger. What he wants, of course, is the more 
dimly lit romantic lights in the city here with Mario again. So he gets a little depth in the background, lights a little bit of the curtains and everything. And, and he's got a nice line here separating them with the soda. And, and the, as the movie goes on, it, his, his romantic view is a darker, more cynical view. He's lit that way. He's lit so that only half his face shows up. A little reflection off the glass. Here, uh, look at the way Willis does a rule of thirds in the Woody's face in the glass. It's also well balanced off. And, and talk about horizon lines to talk about last week's uh, lecture. We, we Look at what he does with the horizon line in the boat here. He, he, he puts the boat closer in the foreground so that the, the expanse of the, the lake is more uh, preponderant. So showing that these two people are, are, are fish out of water. And then he'll divide the space with lines here wonderfully so that each character has their own window. And Willis, and here we have a shot of Willis crouching down for a low shot, known for his low shots here. Um, and this is an example, looking up at, at the two couples in New York. What he gets with a low shot is he brings in how large they are against the rather deep expanse in the background. So he brings the people forward because he's looking up low. They become as looming and large as the buildings of the city. They identify with the city. He does it here with uh, Clute, uh, McQueen, and Fonda. He shoots low, and he makes the city just as important a figure. And he's working with the art department here because you look in the foreground, he's got the trash cans, which uh, sets everything up so he gets some depth from the trash cans. But he also brings that as a character into the shot. 